WrestleMania, yes, that glorious time of year, where we all pray to God that the show's going to deliver and everybody else in wrestling seems to want to leech off of it. Pretty much describes the WrestleMania week, the WrestleMania weekend in a nutshell. A bunch of hardcore fans go to the location and drop way too damn much money to be to meet a bunch of wrestlers and go to a bunch of shows. And then occasionally party in between. But we're here. So welcome to this WrestleMania themed Q&A video. Hopefully this goes well. It probably won't last long because there weren't a ton of actual questions related to WrestleMania 34, believe it or not. Um, but anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get started. BW Roses 98 uh, Brian asks, should the WWE find a way to ban other from promotions from piggybacking on WrestleMania weekend? I know they were trying to do this in the past, and really it was kind of unsuccessful, ultimately. No, I don't think so. Because if anything, it is something that they could use as an additional leverage piece when cities are bidding for the right to host WrestleMania. They can say, not only do we bring this in terms of our own product, here was what we bring from an ROH running a show here, Impact Wrestling running a show here, these other independents, House of Hardcore, uh, Evolve, whoever the hell else is running a show there. I can't even keep track of how many companies were running damn shows there. You could sit there and say, hey, that is part of our package. We bring in additional people that aren't even coming to our show. So while I get it from a standpoint of it being kind of annoying that everybody wants to crap on you, but everybody wants to leech on you too, um, if anything, I feel like it could be a positive for the company in terms of being able to go in their leveraging position and say, hey, here's actually what we can truly bring outside of just in our own selves. Um, so no, I don't think they should. And frankly, they should have better things to concern themselves with, uh, if we're being honest. A cyanide rain asks, Will Braun Strowman and Nia Jax celebrate their wins with a live sex celebration? You know, maybe some of you sick fucks would want to see that. It would be something, I suppose. But sorry, there's something more morbidly curious to me about Braun smashing Alexa Bliss and, <laughs> and Nia Jax smashing Rockstar Spud. Excuse me, Drake Maverick. I don't know about you, but maybe, but maybe you like the thought of Braun and Nia having a live sex celebration. I think Braun and Alexa and Drake Maverick and Nia Jax is infinitely more interesting. I'm just saying. Good question, though. Sheezy Ali. Uh, do you think Taker shows up to brawl with Cena? And they actually set up a match for WrestleMania 35. I hate you. I hate you. No, get it done. Get it fucking over with. That would be some shit they would do. It's on their biggest show of the year. Devote a segment to setting up a match for next year's show. I mean, they've done it in the past, so why wouldn't they? I'm just that would be the shit that they would do. <laughs> They're gonna take her. They're gonna ride out on his Harley or his chopper. <laughs> they're, gonna, they're gonna challenge each other to next year's WrestleMania because this one can't hold them. <laughs> oh, Everett Harding, favorite Undertaker match other than the ones with Shawn Michaels, and I suppose technically that will have to include twenty five, twenty six, and twenty eight. Um, I really enjoyed the one with him and Edge at twenty four. I enjoyed the one with him and Batista quite a bit at 23, uh, Mark Henry at 22, Orton at 21, um, so a lot of them. Perhaps my single favorite taker match, though, might still be him and Kane at 15, or 14, excuse me, going semi-main event, because the story and the build-up, the lead-up to it, it was in the right place on the card. I love that match, just like I loved that show. Um... So that's probably my absolute favorite out of all of them, even above the Shawn Michaels ones, even if we say in theory they were better. Uh, the first Taker and Kane Mania match at 14 to me is at the top of the list in terms of my pure favorites. Um, Joe Dalglish. Which Mania did WWE drop the ball with that had the potential to be great? I think several of them over the years 
but the uh, most recent example to me was 25. Like you had a pretty hot story with uh, Triple H and Orton. You had a hot story as well with Matt and Jeff Hardy. You had a pretty interesting, compelling story with a match that I think everybody had to know, didn't they, at that time, was going to be the highlight of the night, which was Taker and Shawn Michaels, and yet it ended up mid-carding. Um, you, had, If I recall correctly, you had a tag team unifi- title unification match that went on the kickoff or pre-show. Um, WrestleMania 25, like this was supposed to be a big deal. And that show really underwhelmed and disappointed. And it could have been so much more. So for a recent example, that's one that I look to. Um, Charles McCain. Will WWE someday hold WrestleMania in a foreign country? Well, I mean, technically, they've held it in a foreign country before. They've had it in Canada a couple of times, in Toronto at the Sky Dome. So, I mean, they technically have. Are they going to in the future? Yes. Will they have another one in Canada at some point? Probably. Could they have one in Mexico? Maybe. Um, maybe. You're maybe asking more so about the having one in London and in Tokyo. And those are possibilities, but there are challenges that come associated with that. But I would not rule it out at all. Uh, Corey asks, what is the most underrated WrestleMania ever, in your opinion? Um... I think I've talked before about WrestleMania 7, I think doesn't get enough love. Um, you know, Hogan's Slaughter and the time that it was in, while it's not an artistic masterpiece to watch, I mean, it represented a lot. Uh, Jake and Rick Martel in the blindfold match, I thought was freaking epic in its own way. I had so much fun watching that damn match. Um, 7 also had Warrior and Savage, the real match of the night. The freaking retirement match. It was, it was great. And then the, the fact that Elizabeth comes running down afterwards and takes out Sherry and her and Macho Man had this moment that had been building up for so many years. I always feel like WrestleMania Seven gets a raw deal. They focus too much about the fact how it was originally supposed to be in the L.A. Coliseum, but due to poor ticket sales and other things, they moved it inside to a much smaller venue. It still ended up being a very underrated WrestleMania in the grand scope of things, in my opinion. Uh, Andrew Harrington, do you plan on going to WrestleMania 35 next year? Well, I planned on going to 34, and I had reasons why I ended up not going. Uh, 35 is going to be in the New York, New Jersey area, which is much closer to me. Uh, Makes driving there more realistic. Imagine me pulling up in my black and my caddy. Uh, We'll see. At that point in time, I'll be back in school. So have to see how finances go. I would love to go, though. Definitely. Even if it was just for a couple of days to hit, like, the Hall of Fame ceremony, NXT TakeOver, WrestleMania, and then get the hell out of Dodge, that might be all it would be able to be. Um, but, yeah, I would like to go. Uh, we'll see what happens. Victor Tran, besides England, what other country do you think Mania could be held at? Well, easy answer is Canada because it's been there a couple of times before and probably will be again at some point. Mexico is a possibility, although you have to wonder for security issues, a kid, but not really. Um, But that could be a possibility because you don't deal with some of the time zone concerns that you do if it's in countries that are overseas. I think at some point in time, the company is going to kick the tires on having a WrestleMania or a SummerSlam back in London. Uh, I think part of the challenge, too, is if I remember correctly, doesn't uh, Wembley have an open air stadium? So are you going to have WrestleMania there in early April? I'm not sure what the weather is in England that time of year, but I can't imagine it's balmy. You might say, well, New York City uh, isn't balmy either, and that's true, but it's also New York City. It's the biggest media market in this country, and a much bigger media market than London. Uh, And also doesn't have the uh, five-hour time difference between uh, London and the East Coast. Uh, In terms of other countries, they might look at something like Tokyo at some point in time down the road. Um... I would imagine in the future there will be years where they have it overseas. I just don't know if we've quite reached that point just yet. Brian Knight, which matches need to deliver for this mania to be great? For it to be great, Reigns Lesnar needs to totally kick ass. Shinsuke and AJ needs to be the match that so many people envision it it can be. 
Um, that SmackDown Triple Threat Tag Title match really needs to be off the charts. Uh, Daniel Bryan needs that shine um, and that glorious victory for his return back to in-ring competition. Uh, Cena and Taker not stinking up the joint would be a significant addition in the positive category. Asuka Charlotte um, needs to deliver. So I think there's like five or six matches, things, that if they deliver, the show could go down as being great. I think it's asking a lot, but nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Wilson the Freshman, what was your favorite year for pro wrestling? My personal favorite, I think, was 1997. Because you could see the evolution and change in WWF's product at the time. When you go, let's say, to the 97 Royal Rumble and you look at that show. And then you get to Survivor Series 1997 and everything in between. And you see the change in the characters, such as Bret Hart. And you go with the Team Canada stuff and Shawn Michaels. And here comes DX. you got the nation. Stone Cold becomes Stone Cold. You're starting to get Vince on TV more, which is eventually going to lead into the biggest business they've ever done, in theory. Um, then you've got WCW reigning supreme with the freaking NWO and Sting in his pursuit of Hogan throughout 97. ECW gets their pay-per-view and barely legal, and they're doing kick-ass stuff. Like, to me... Even though you could say for WWF, years like 98, 99, 2000, 2001 were much more significantly better from a financial standpoint, from a sheer looking at the business standpoint and entertainment value standpoint, it's hard for me to top 1997. And that's my favorite year out of all of them. Because you could see some of the great that was already happening and you look back and you see some of the great that was coming. I love 97. I can watch 97 stuff all the time. Davis and Crooks. With Mania in the New York, New Jersey area next year, should LT and Bam Bam Bigelow go into the Hall of Fame? Um, Yeah, and I was surprised Bam Bam didn't go in this year because originally the rumors were that he was. Maybe the decision was made uh, that you were going to wait a year on him, and if that's the case, that's fine. It makes more sense uh, doing it there in New Jersey. Cool. Yeah, why not put both of them in? Uh, Wenger out. What match will be your toilet break? I'm going to be fair. This main card is five plus hours potentially. There's probably going to be a pee pee and a poopy break at some point in time. It's going to be needed. It's going to be necessary. It's going to be required. If I had to choose the matches or the moments, that would probably... If they have a live musical performance, that would take care of one of them. Uh... Crap. What would be the designated piss or shit break match? Because I can't even say like Nia and Alexa because if they do it right, that should be really quick. Asuka and Charlotte, I, I, I'm not going to bail on that one. Um, I don't know. I guess just when nature calls. <laughs> uh, I don't know that there's any one thing that I point to. And I say that I'm just going to miss it and I don't really care. Just as I'm thinking about it in my head right now. Um, but we'll see how the night goes. Because the whole second half of the show could be like one big toilet and smoke break if it's that bad. Charles Buddha. Is WrestleMania better to watch on TV or live and in person? I've never been able to go see it live and in person. So I can only imagine how much better it is to experience it live. I mean, watching it on TV, there are perks, there are advantages. But I can't, you know, just like anything else, uh, wrestling related specifically, it is truly better to go experience it live and in person. And it changes your whole perspective. The whole thing is different. So it's got to be better live in person. i got to imagine that significantly better. Uh, Brian Yule, is the Memphis mid-card piece of crap going into the Hall of Fame your only reason for not going to WrestleMania? No. But it didn't help matters. It wasn't the only reason. There were other things that came up, other things I decided to prioritize that had to put that trip, unfortunately, on the back burner. Sorry, it's just the way life kind of works out. So, you know, I, by not going to Mania, I basically already have enough money saved up to be able to pay for my first semester 
in school in the fall. And by the time we get to the fall, hopefully I would have enough money saved up to be able to pay for the spring, and then it snowballs. So at least going the community college route to get the associates, I'll be able to afford that easily then once it comes time to transitioning to uh, the four-year school for those last two years to get the bachelor's. We'll see what happens then. But that's what I get for waiting so damn late in life to go back and prioritize this, and I'm now in a position where I could do so. So unfortunately, whereas going to WrestleMania and experiencing it all is a huge item on my bucket list and it needs to happen and it has to happen and probably would be very important to me as a wrestling fan to help kind of revitalize and rejuvenate me a little bit. Unfortunately, adulting sucks sometimes and life gets in the fucking way. So I'm happy for everybody that is in a position that can go. I'm happy for everybody that is able to afford to go. I hope they have the time of their freaking lives and I truly mean that. And I hope one of these years, whether it's next year in New York, New Jersey area or in the future year, that I'm able to go there and be the life of the party and we can burn the mother sucker down. But that Memphis Midcar piece of crap going in the Hall of Fame was not a great incentive to go. And that was a contributing factor. Just pointing that out. Alex. Why did WWE use small venues for Mania in the mid to late 90s, especially since they had run some bigger venues in the early 90s? Speaking about the Sky Dome, WrestleMania 6, talking about uh, the Hoosier Dome and WrestleMania 8. It's a great question, and I think part of it was the financial reality of the time. Like, you go back to 1997, the company was in a really bad place financially, so... It was a huge risk to run a big venue, nor was the product necessarily hot enough to justify running these bigger venues. They just weren't in a place where they could. Then as you got into the Attitude Era and you got to the point where uh, they maybe could have run bigger venues, um, maybe they just weren't ready, maybe they weren't confident enough, maybe they felt like they could still make enough money uh, running these smaller venues that they didn't need to go with all the challenges that comes with running a much bigger venue and lose that additional money for running a much bigger venue. I'm sure there were reasons, but I think it is a fair question. Like, from WrestleMania 8, if I'm thinking correctly, maybe part of it was looking at uh, the Royal Rumble in 97. You did that at the Alamo Dome, and maybe you didn't feel like that was the greatest success. Uh, what was it from WrestleMania 8? The next show in a big-time venue, if I remember correctly, was WrestleMania 17, wasn't it? Yeah, so it seems a little odd. I'll give you that. And I'm sure there are other thought processes as to why uh, I, I'd be curious to know what the real answer is uh, Mason Clark closes us out by asking will WWE ever do a mania in multiple cities like Wrestlemania 2 there's a part of me that wonders if they did one in London or if they did one in Tokyo that they might think about doing something where they did dual venues for mania especially if the show is going to be this damn long there is a part of me that wonders if they would do that like we're gonna start off in tokyo then we're gonna go to london and then we are going to run the rest of it here in city z so that way the people that wanted to go to wrestlemania but for whatever reason can't go to london or can't go to tokyo in part because of cost or maybe issues with getting passports or whatever things it might be just the logistics of it we still have something for them here that is a possibility. I don't know how eager they would be to do it. I don't know how likely they would be to do it. I just wonder if that would be a possibility. They would try to do some real type of global thing to let everybody know how big of a deal they are and be like, we can run Tokyo, we can run London, and we can run New York City at the same damn time. And they might. That might be a possibility. You never know. But anyways, thanks for everybody that submitted your WrestleMania-related questions. Let's all hope to God WrestleMania 34 delivers, huh? Thanks. Remember, OTR Essential, not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. And to appease some of you older school cats, since 2010, I'm going back to the old channel, mind you. Since 2010, I've been entertaining myself while you watch. All right.